So let's look at memory in large language models with Langchain. I'll have a link to this code in the description. If you click on it, it'll take you to GitHub. You'll want to click on the open and collab button there. Sometimes GitHub does stupid things with this link and it might be a broken link. So just click on that, that top link there. It'll take you right to opening it in collab and we will be here. So we'll go ahead and run this section so that it sets the appropriate flags. You do need to install Langchain. Running this bit of code here will install Langchain so that it's there and available for you to make use of if you're doing this in Colab. Don't have to do it in Colab. can certainly do it anywhere that you, that you want. We open, we import now the Langchain OpenAI model um, and this gives us access to make use of the OpenAI chat, the LLM capabilities. You will need an OpenAI LLM key. Or, well, it uses more than just LLMs, but a key. And you'll get that, that token or key and put it into here. I do give you a link um, description in module 6.2 on how to go about getting one of those. If you're a student at Washington University, I provide one of these for you and you can get that out of the Canvas course information for assignment six for this class. We are going to create an open AI LLM connection. We are going to use some temperature because it's chatting with us. We would like for it to be at least a little bit creative with what we're going to say. What it's going to say, actually. So you need to give it memory. If you've ever seen a movie called uh, Memento, not Momento, like moment in Spanish, but Memento, it's a, it's a great movie. It's about uh, uh, this, this guy who has this kind of retrograde sort of amnesia where he has no short-term memory anymore. And that is kind of a problem, certainly for him, because he's trying to solve this, this crime case. But he keeps this notebook with him all the time. And at the top, he describes his, his situation, and then he keeps adding more information, and then even summarizing it, because it, it would start to get pretty long. And this is all of his memory from the point which he had the accident where he could no longer remember it. Boy, that is exactly how ChatGPT deals with these kind of things. LLMs, by default, have no memory whatsoever. You're, they have stuff that they remember from history and facts and other things that they were trained on, but they don't remember the stuff you're telling it unless they put it into one of these memory objects. And then it does nothing more, just like that notebook, it puts that in with the prompt that is going to come into it. So that's how they kind of pretend they have memory, just like in the movie Memento. So we're going to do that. And there's various ways that you can do that memory. We're going to look at two. One is just the conversation buffer window. All this is going to do is it's going to keep like a movie script of everything that you've said and everything that it's said, because it needs to remember what it tells you. Because it, remember, if it doesn't know something, it's going to kind of interpolate it and it's going to make something up. If you ask it what its name is, it'll tell you all different kinds of things. Maybe HAL 9000, I've seen it do sometimes. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. So it wants to remember what it told you so it doesn't get caught in a lie, so to speak. So it, it, this memory utility key, or object keeps all of it as just a script that gets put into the prompt, much like the, the notebook that they kept in the movie Memento. So here I create the memory. We're going to use a conversational window. Now the window means that it, it can only store so much information. So once the, the text of the script gets longer than it can deal with, stuff starts falling off at the end and it only remembers the more recent stuff. That can become a bit of a problem and that's why we'll see the summary one that we deal with in a moment. But here's the conversation. I give it an input. Hi, my name is Jeff, and my name is Jeff. I'm Jeff Heaton. Hello, Jeff. It says to you, it's nice to meet you. My name is AI, short for Artificial Intelligence. I'm a computer program, blah, blah, blah. And then I ask it, what is my name? It remembers that. If we were using the code that I gave you earlier, where we're just sending it right and getting the response back, there would be no memory. And a lot of times, you don't want there to be a memory. That'll just be additional overhead. If you're going to run it through a thousand strings and extract the birth dates, like we saw an example of before, 
it doesn't need any memory. That That's not necessarily a good thing. But here you can see it just starts to build up this transcript so that it, it knows. And you can always use this command on the memory to, to dump the memory and see what it's working with. And you can see the script being built here. We'll look at the summary one, which gives you a little bit more capabilities. But for now, let's look at creating a custom bot with a different system prompt. So what if we at Washington University wanted to have this nice helpful bot that would talk to students? Here is the template or the system prompt that I'm creating for it. The following is friendly conversation between a human and an AI to assist Washington University students. The AI should stick to topics about Washington University. If the AI does not know how to answer the question, it should suggest to the student to speak to their advisor. And then there's this other information. So the conversation, the current conversation comes in as history. This is where whatever that memory object is going to come up with either a script or a summary and tuck it in there. Then the human is going to say what the human is going to say, and then the Warshu assistant is going to continue and complete that. Remember, everything's in the prompt. The memory, all this stuff is in the prompt. When we get into more advanced things like, like RAG, we'll see that it basically has the ability to invoke say maybe the Warshu search engine and search Warshu stuff and, and add that into there as well. So this does all of that and then we define this as the prompt template for the conversation chain that we're, that we're creating and we're using a buffer memory window just like before. We tell it too that its name is Warshu Assistant. So now you can start to ask it things specific to Warshu. Where is the bookstore? If I just ask the normal chat GPT that, I have no idea what it would say. Where is the bookstore? Uh, it needs to know location. Doesn't surprise me. Well, this one knows that it's the Warshu Assistant, so it would tell you the bookstore is located on South 40 residential area next to the, next to the duck, the Danford University Center. And that's, that's true. That is where it's at. Where's a nice quiet area to study? ChatGPT would probably tell me, I don't know, library, something like that. And it says there's several quiet study areas on campus, including the Olin Library, the Arts uh, and Architecture Library, the Study Room, and the Residential Colleges, etc., etc. So, because of that system prompt, it knows it's linked to Washington University. I didn't train it on this information about WashU. It just knows this because this information is already built into it. If I switched it to maybe a less well-known university, like, I don't know, maybe a small, relatively new regional community college or something, it might not know it as well. That would be a very interesting experiment to try. But then I ask it something not related to Warshu, although, I don't know, maybe after finals week, this is related to Warshu, but what is the meaning of life? And then it tells you to ask something about Warshu. And here you can see the script that it was building, so it knows all the different things that you said. I think it's kind of funny, too, sometimes when I um, ask, it, oh, although actually I put this one in a chain, so this, is, this one's from before. Um, but I'll correct that in the... You can see I built a chain here. I didn't actually instantiate the memory object as a separate object. That's why we were not seeing it. I will fix that so that we get the right output from that, because this is just repeating what it had before. Then the conversation summer, summary memory. So here we import it, and again, I'm not exporting that memory object, so be aware of that. Um, I will correct that in the, in the actual thing. That Everything works fine except for this last one here, where it's, uh, it's pulling that out. So here I'm using the conversation summary and I can tell it the various things and notice everything works the same even though I'm using this conversational mem uh, summary memory. And this is going to basically just keep a paragraph there that always describes the state of what we're talking about. And it will probably will let older things drop off but it will have some notion of keeping important things around. And then whatever is in the system prompt is always kept around. So thank you for watching this uh, introduction to memories and large language models, particularly through Langchain. If, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss anything from this course or other projects in AI that I work on.